our traction splinting with our KTD, our Kendrick Traction Device. So we've gone over a lot of the details when we did traction splitting with the Sager. We have that video. This we're just gonna kind of go through how the Kendrick Traction Device works. So again, I've got a mid-shaft femur fracture. I'm gonna have my partner hold manual stabilization of that injured extremity. Check my CMS, comparing my pulses. Got good equal bilateral pulses. Channeling, can you wiggle your toes? Can you tell which toe I'm touching? Big toe. Can you tell which toe I'm touching? Little toe. All right. For this device, we have a boot hitch. A lot of times that's for a ski boot. Then we're going to have our securing straps that we'll get to later. We'll have the pole for, it's like a tent pole. They all come out and snap together. Then we're gonna have our ischial strap. It goes up on the thigh and our ankle hitch. So to start, we're gonna apply our ischial strap when you apply this, make sure that the buckle ends up on top of the leg. If it's underneath the leg, you're gonna have trouble tightening that down under the leg because you won't have access to it. I'll use the gap in the back of the knee to try and slide my buckle under and floss that strap high into the groin. All right, Chandler, if you need to adjust any parts so they don't pinch, adjust them now. I'm good. We want this uh, double female piece of the ischial strap to be on the side of the leg, running right along the bone. We don't need to tighten it down too tight because it's the, the groin that keeps it from moving, moving up our patient. Then I'm going to secure my ankle hitch. I'm gonna slide this right under the back of the ankle in that little gap. And I want this tight right above the medial and lateral malleolus. My heel strap goes right under the heel. And as you can see, that's gonna put this right in line with the tib fib. Then I can pull the green strap tight so that my heel strap runs tight along the heel. And I can loosen up my strap so that I have a big distance on the yellow piece and a little space on the red piece. Now I'm going to measure my device. I want at least one section below the bottom of the foot. So I will take out the top section, bend it in half, and that's gonna go into my ischial strap. And then for the KTD, I'm going to secure the middle strap around the knee. That's gonna help to hold the, the tent poles secure as I pull traction so they don't bow out. Right. Once I have my device secured to the side of the leg, I'm gonna take my yellow webbing and there's a loop inside of it. That loop is gonna go over the boot hitch or the, the boot of the traction device. Once I have that secure, I'm gonna pull on my red tab. As I pull on my red tab, I'll push on the device to push up and pull down. That's going to pull my traction. Because the KTD does not have a scale on it, I can't pull 10% or 15 pounds. I don't know where that is. So I can pull until I meet the same length, so the injured extremity is the same length as the good extremity, or until my patient feels relief. I also can have my partner release manual stabilization once my traction splint has taken over that traction. All right, 
Then I'm going to go ahead and secure my device. I'll slide this under the gap in the knee, up over the thigh. Slide this under the knee and floss it down over the calf. And then recheck my CMS. Uh, equal bilateral pulses. Shannon, can you wiggle your toes? Can you tell which toe I'm touching? Big toe. Can you tell which toe I'm touching? Little. Now we're going to move our patient to the backboard. We're going to secure the torso, hips, and device to the backboard and recheck CMS. That's our traction splint of a femur fracture with a KTD. Thank you.